thank you. Okay, so welcome to today's uh, session that continues with the zero cosmological constant. And we're happy to have Laura Donay, Donay to tell us about EMS flux algebra in celestial holography. Thank you very much. So let me start by thanking uh, all of you, Costas, Andre, Joris, Gizem, and Gideon for putting all Lambda together and for the opportunity to talk. <clears throat> So this is um, a joint work with uh, Romain Rodziconi, who gave us a very nice talk yesterday. And um, it's, uh, the focus of this talk will be about flat space, namely lambda goes to zero. And okay, um, and Andrea told us on Monday, everything there was to know about celestial holography which is uh, this new proposal for formulating a holographic correspondence for gravity in asymptotically flat spacetime. But let me just, uh, for those who weren't there, briefly remind uh, the most important features. So the, the, um, the proposal is that any four dimensional scattering process in, uh, in asymptotically flat spacetime can be encoded in a conformal field theory that is formulated uh, at, the, at the boundary of, of space-time, namely on this uh, sphere at infinity called the celestial sphere. And more precisely, uh, the idea is to rewrite uh, uh, scattering elements in terms of a correlator defined on this putative celestial conformal field theory, which involves uh, operators on the sphere, currently over here, which are parameterized by the point Z, Z and Z bar uh, at which the particle, the incoming or outgoing particle crosses the celestial sphere and a bunch of quantum numbers, um, uh, essentially the conformal dimension and the spin. So in this holographic formulation, a very crucial role has been played by this transform here, which is called the Mellin transform which uh, trades the energy of the particle omega for this conformal dimension delta. In particular, um, incoming or outgoing uh, plane waves, so here I'm focusing on mass, massless, uh, massless particles, but there is an analogous relationship for massive particles as Andrea explained on Monday. Um, these plane waves now uh, with this Malin transform get mapped to um, a different object, so which would play the role of the operator in the celestial uh, field theory, as indeed the very uh, interesting properties of this object is now that they transform in a manifest uh, way as, as global SL2C primaries under the action of, of, of Lorentz transformation, which, which has is nothing but the action of Möbius or global SC2C transformation on the, on, the coordinate, on the sphere coordinate Z and Z bar. So now we will be dealing with these objects which resemble a very much object in the conformal field theory as they have, uh, they are, as they are primaries with weights H and H bar given respectively by the sum and differences of the conformal dimension delta and the spin. So here, I didn't write, uh, this is a scalar primary, but if you have a spinning particle, there will be a helicity factor. And this uh, four dimensional helicity is identified with the 2D spin on the celestial safety. So we have these uh, primaries on the celestial sphere with weights H and H bar. And, and very interesting um, objects to consider is the so-called celestial currents, which are obtained by taking what we call a conformally soft limits, namely um, uh, taking uh, the, which are obtained by taking the dimension delta going to some integer values. So indeed, I mean, let me just re recall that you see, this is what, what we do here. We are really trading the energy of the particle for this, uh, uh, for this delta. So it was not clear anymore what it meant to be a, conform, uh, a soft particle in this new basis where omega goes to zero. Um, 
and whether these, uh, all these very nice sub theorems would carry through in this new, new basis. But actually, it turns out to be the case when you take integer values of delta. And um, very two objects that I want to emphasize, so I would focus on, on the gravity here. The first object is called a super translation current, which is actually obtained by taking a descendant of the delta equal to one mode. So it has uh, weights, it's transformed as a primary of weights uh, three half, one half. And you can see that um, the soft graviton, the leading soft graviton theorem recast in this new basis implies uh, the following form of an operator product expansion between the super translation current and um, any operator on the celestial sphere. And the fact that these, this object has these very funny and unconventional half integer weights um, actually induces a very important uh, constraint on celestial CFT, which is the fact that uh, the operator uh, ex product expansion involving this object amounts to uh, shifting the weights of, of the operator by half. Another remarkably, I mean, as was shown in this, these papers, um, you can also build an object which transform as a, a, a stress tensor. So it it's, it's a 2 comma zero, more precisely to be precise, it's actually a shadow transform uh, of, of a delta equal to zero. So a shadow transform is, is, is an integral transform of the sphere, which maps uh, a celestial, uh, sorry, a prime, which maps a primary of weights delta to a new one of, of dimension delta plus two. So you take the delta equal to zero uh, conformal sublimit, you shadow it and you obtain something that transforms as a two comma zero. And this is the stress tensor. Obviously there is a anti-holomorphic version of this guy, which is a zero comma two, but I'm focusing on one helicity here. And it's a stress tensor because um, it obeys the word identity of a stress tensor in a 2D uh, CFT. So in other words, you can see these um, operator product expansion involving these celestial currents as the celestial uh, or holographic encoding of uh, the leading and subleading subgraviton theorems. So Andrea already uh, presented, I think, most of, the, of these things on Monday. So now we are transitioning to a very lousy version of the slides, which are handwritten. And this is a very uh, sketchy uh, motivation for the work that I would present now. So I, I told you about this celestial CFT. These, we have these uh, celestial uh, currents, which are arise from uh, conformal sublimit of primaries. And actually you have very important uh, transforms in celestial CFT, which are these uh, shadow and light ray transform. And we, we have op our operator products expansion and many people in celestial holography have been working um, on, you know, recasting uh, scattering amplitude, taking conformally self limit, but also uh, collinear limits, which give you actually uh, operator products exp expansion on the celestial CFT. But I think uh, it's not, we, we still have some work to do on how exactly. Uh, these objects are mapped to the face of, to the fa gravitational phase space of, of gravity for asymptotically flat space times. As for instance, one of the longstanding issue in uh, BMS uh, symmetry algebra was the fact that um, there was, um, the algebra did not close a, a properly algebra, but rather an algebraoid, and there was a field dependent co-cycle in the algebra, um, which, which uh, was in tension to some statement coming from celestial safety. And that was one of the main motivation for the work that I will uh, present now. So I, we are really starting for, from, from square one here, namely I, I'm starting again from the gravitational solution space of a synthetically flat space time um, in the sense of Bondi, Van der Boom, Messner and Zacks. I think Romain had exactly the same uh, notation in his talk yesterday. So let me just uh, br briefly remind that um, 
in this so-called bandy gauge where we have this bandy coordinates u which is running along uh, the future null infinity denoted by scribe plus we have z and z bar as the the transverse coordinates uh, an asymptotic flat space time is in the bandy expansion is can be written in this way where uh, the, the function m here is the bandy mass aspect which is subject to a bandy mass loss formula which encodes the fact that um, the, the, the system is emitting gravitational wave which are es escaping through future null infinity and uh, so here the 2d metric here is given uh, by the 2d around sphere uh, q q naught here plus uh, a subleading term which involves the so-called gravitational shear or um, gravitational data whose time derivative uh, is the bandy nu so and causes the presence of gravitational radiation so i will mostly use that in the bar coordinates for the round sphere metric and finally we have this uh, uh, the angular uh, momentum aspect and a so a uh, this this, coordinate, this notation a uh, stands for the 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 z, z and z bar the angles all right, so um, the, what I will consider is this uh, so-called extended bandy mesner zach symmetries, which were originally introduced by Glenn Barnish and said to, to, to start uh, in 2008, I think. Um, so what are these? Well, they are, I, I'm assuming that everyone is familiar with the, the super translations and super rotations. <clears throat> If you have any questions, just don't hesitate. But uh, the, the version of the BMS group that I will consider is, um, is the one where the Lorentz part of the BMS group is enhanced to include an infinite amount of super rotation, which are local conformal killing vector on the sphere. Um, and so the BMS algebra is given by two copies of the Witt algebra, which are spanned by this. So it's the centerless uh, version of the Virazor algebra in some indirect sum with um, super translation, uh, which then can be singular. <clears throat> so we know we can compute how the, this transformation. So let me say that I will denote all this quantity here by f, you know, so that my f would be include the super translation parameters plus divergence of this uh, super rotation vector field. Uh, so under the action of, of uh, BMS uh, transformations, the solution space, so the shear, the news, the bandy mass aspect, the angular momentum aspect, have a definite transformation law, which are given by this expression. So let me uh, maybe stress that a, a, a subtlety that will be important in the in the future talk. You, you can see that uh, if you look at the, how the news transforms, so is the time derivative of this shear here. It involves an inhomogeneous part here. Namely, if you if you start with a zero uh, uh, NAB, the action of super rotation will shift this quantity by, by this function. And this is not a, a, a very nice property because I mean that you start with something that is non-radiating, acting with support translation will, will, will um, turn on an, an NAB. So you don't really want to call this um, a proper new sensor. So this, this led these authors to define what is called the shifted new tensor, which is uh, the difference between the time derivative of the shear and uh, this new thing here, which is called the NAB vac of the vacuum news. I, I'm not entering detail, but uh, roughly speaking, it can be expressed in terms of the field here, which, um, which is actually satisfying the equation of motion of a Liouville uh, field. So let's call it the Liouville field. And the reason why uh, this object is, might be interesting to consider is because it, it was designed in such a way that in transforming now in a homogeneous way under the action of extended BME symmetries. In other words, any non-radiative con configuration will have, uh, an, will have um, a zero 
shifted new tensor even after acting with sporadization because you see it's homogeneous. Um, well, it's also important to consider um, fall off conditions when you approach the corners of future null infinity, namely when u goes to plus or minus infinity. And here in this talk, we'll uh, follow this uh, fall of condition, which were introduced recently also by Miguel and Alok in a recent paper. Of course, associated to this uh, shifted new tensor, you can also define a shift, shifted shear tensor. And uh, this fall of condition on u, so as you approach the boundaries of uh, namely square plus plus and square plus minus, um, you can see that um, this u fall off imply that basically um, the, the shifted shear is purely electric. So the magnetic part of the shear vanishes. And NAB hat, so the shifted news is zero at the corners of scry, scry plus plus, and scry, scry plus minus. So and Romain uh, briefly uh, explained yesterday uh, why these things are important. So all these subtleties about the shifting news and so on, it's because thanks to this uh, quantity, uh, the use of this quantity, they could define a, a Hamiltonian which closes um, an algebra at without any central extension and using in an in important way, the standard Libra ticket at the corners of, of, of future null infinity. So that means that the, this generalized BMS algebra can be seen uh, to be realized also at spatial infinity. And there were also re, uh, related um, findings by um, Miguel and Javier and also by Marqueno and Cédric Troussard. Okay, now, so we have this gravitational phase space. And um, now I, I want to define what I will call a BMS flux. And I want to show you that very importantly, they transform as Vera Zora primaries um, on the celestial sphere. So this is the usual, I guess, standard definition for, um, for Vera Zora primaries of weights uh, H and H bar, like you can see, for instance, the Di Francesco. Um, and the first object I want to define is um, the so-called supermomentum flux. So all these fluxes will be uh, U integrals of the time derivative of, of momenta. So here, this is the, the momentum. So I think uh, Romain introduced that yesterday. So you can see that this momentum is not only given by the, um, the bandy mass, but it has these extra terms here, which precisely involve these shifted, uh, well, this vacuum stress tensor that, that, that I introduced in, in the beginning. And all this is very subtle, why you have to come up with uh, this, this prescription, but an important feature of, of this object is that if you compute how uh, this uh, supermomentum flux transforms under the action of super translation and super rotation, or namely extended BMS symmetries, it will have a very neat uh, and compact transformation law, which is precisely the one of uh, Vera Zora primary of weights three half, uh, three half. So if you were not to, to, to take into account these NAB vac here and, and its transformation law, then you would get a very messy expression. So all these uh, subtle contributions are very important if you want to, to write down such a transformation rule. And this object was, I think, originally uh, pointed out. Uh, so this three half, three half transformation rule by uh, Glenn and Romain in their co-adjoint paper. So that's, that's, the, first, um, that's the first flux, a super, a super momentum flux. Now to relate these things with the, the object of the celestial conformal field theory, what we did is to prescribe a split between a soft and a hard part. So as usual, the soft part is always linear in the, 
in, in, in the field and the hard part is, is quadratic. But we had to be very careful about how to define this, uh, this prescription if we wanted to include the presence of, of uh, Virazoro or let's say um, of super rotations. Uh, again, with this um, subtlety concerning the vacuum structure in the presence of super rotations. But if, we, if you accept this prescription, then you can show that respectively the soft, which is linear in, in, in the news and the hard part transform separately uh, with this nice transformation rule. So I will focus since I want to, to, to link this, uh, this uh, eventually these fluxes with the super translation, uh, sorry, with the celestial currents, we'll focus on the soft part. And the soft part can be rewritten in a probably more familiar way for those who are familiar with this um, uh, soft, um, soft operator literature of Strominger and collaborators uh, in terms of precisely the leading soft operator, which is, the, which is actually an object that transforms as a three half minus a half. And if you take, you act on this with this curly D here, which we call a super rotation covariant derivative, which was also used in, in these references or some variation of this um, object. Uh, if you act with the super rotation covariant de derivative on a primary, it will shift the weights of by one. Uh, so if you ask with D, you will, um, you will um, increase the dimension H by one unit. So, Say if you take you act with d bar uh, squared with on this curly n o here the leading soft graviton operator, then you will see that you will obtain a three half uh, three half because you're increasing by two these um, left moving um, weights. So you ob you obtain indeed an, uh, uh, a three half three half built out from this very basic really building blocks, which are these leading graviton, subgraviton operators. So that's, that's, the, first, um, that's the first object that I'm, I want to, to emphasize. And we will see later how this thing is related to the celestial currents that are introduced in the beginning and how the algebra actually turned out to give uh, the operator product expansion on the celestial CFT. If there is any question, just, just let me know. So the second object is the super angular momentum flux, which um, will um, be now the integral. So there are some subtlety about equivalent classes that I don't want to, to discuss, but so these super angular momentum flux can be written as the U integra integrals of the time derivative of this super angular momentum curly N here. So again, you see that you have this very uh, complicated expression. So this curly N here doesn't involve only the angular momentum aspect, but this bunch of terms which are necessary um, to, to obtain uh, all the, the nice properties that, that uh, I will mention in a second. Namely, um, Using again the transformation rules of these of these fields, you you get a very definite uh, transformation law, which is the one of a primary field where you can reach the the directly uh, the weights. So it's transformed as a one comma two under the action of extended BMS symmetries, um, and it also involves uh, some some transformation law uh, using where this curly tier here, the super translation symmetry. So now you can also repackage this, the soft part of this object in terms of now the subleading uh, soft, soft graviton operator. So the subleading soft mode was originally introduced by Stromgen collaborator and showed that you could uh, derive the word identity using this object was giving you uh, a new theorem, the so-called subleading subgraviton theorem. 
So this, this curly N1 here is a subleading subgraviton mode and it transforms as a one minus one. And the curly C object here is related to the, to the so-called super translation field as scribe plus plus or scribe plus minus. So if you're familiar with these um, memory effects, the displacement memory effects, so it's basically the super translation, um, the super translation field that is responsible for the presence of the memory effect. Um, so again, I mean, the, the, this soft part uh, ha has this nice transformation law um, as transform as a one comma two under the action of extended BMS symmetries. So this is a, sum a summary of the thing that I've been mentioning. So we have these, these curly T and curly Y are, are the symmetry parameter. So this generate super translation and these uh, generate super rotations. Um, we have defined these BMX fluxes, this curly P, which is a three half, three half and a curly J, which is the super angular momentum flux. They come from some, um, with acting with the derivative super covariant derivative on the leading and subleading uh, soft graviton operator. And in, in the rest of the talk, I will explain you how they are related to the object that I introduced in the beginning and which really play a fundamental role in celestial holography, uh, namely the super translation current straight P and uh, the stress tensor. So is there any question at this stage? If not, uh, okay, this is uh, uh, again a summary. So we define uh, this momenta. So let me emphasize that there is a subtle prescription for that, which builds on the work of Geoffrey, Adrien, Romain. They satisfy all these uh, nice properties. They are finite, the U fall of make them finite uh, as you approach a scribe plus plus and scribe plus minus. They vanish for vacuum configuration. They close under the standard bracket, so you don't need to use this fancy uh, modified bracket, um, as Roma told you yesterday. And the soft and the hard part that we prescribed, you, you can see that they give you back the well-known expression that were derived in this um, all this literature when you turn off the Liouville field. So basically, when you forget about these um, these subtleties arising in the, due to the presence of, of local conformal field vector fields, namely um, when you turn off this vacuum stress tensor here, then you can recover the usual expression in the literature, so everything is consistent. All right. So now let me turn to the algebra that is uh, formed by these objects. So most of the most of the literature that is dealing with the charges in gravity has to do with these so so-called covariant phase space methods, which were originally developed by Ierwald, Wal Zupas, and um, Barnish and Brandt and and others. And when we, you apply these fancy techniques to com compute charges as a, associated to asymptotic symmetries. In the case of BMS, um, then you find a, a, a several numbers of features which are uh, maybe very tricky. So in general, I mean, the charge will not be integrable uh, nor conserved because you have a radiation that is escaping through the system. And it's, it's been a whole discussion of how in general you can impose additional criteria to, to isolate a specific part of this charge um, and especially an integrable part. So there have been also a lot of de recent development in the group uh, at Perimeter and so by Fredel, Pranzetti, Oliveri, and also um, Flanagan's Nichols and others, which are discussing how you can do that. So it's, 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 it's a general, uh, a, a very generic question how to isolate a specific integrable part 
for this kind of system. And so here, uh, the good thing is that there was already a prescription for how to do that in this case, uh, which again has to do with uh, this paper. So the, the, this is this big F is the total flux. So I, I show you before uh, part of these fluxes, and now I'm just summing, summing them up. So this flux is an integral, uh, the total flux is really uh, can be written as the integral of the sphere of these, uh, these, these objects, where again, this, this thing in, in, in orange are the, super the symmetry generator, super translation, super rotations. And this thing in blue are these fluxes that are present before, which are again, u integral of the time derivative of the momentum. And this object can be seen as being really the pairing uh, between, as you can see, the, the generator orange in, and the momenta in blue. So this provides you uh, a very nice uh, pairing. And using this pairing, you can really then interpret the transformation laws that I have uh, showed you before. So how this, this moment, these things transform under uh, BMS symmetries as being the coagent, as transforming the coagent representation of, uh, of BMS4. So the coagent representation of BMS4 was built in, um, in the paper that appeared uh, this year by Glenn and Roma, and is very important for, for various reasons. So it's, it's a remark, but somehow an essential uh, remark. And you can, by, by using this prescription that I showed you before, the, between the soft and the hard part, we did use that the, the, the soft momenta, the, the soft fluxes um, also transform in the quadrant representation of BMS, of the extended BMS group. Now, okay, why, why all this is good for? Well, now you can, you can, you can derive the algebra of these things. So we define the bracket between this object in the usual way. And as I said, but let me emphasize again, um, an important thing is that the bracket uh, between these fluxes uh, closes um, with using the usual Lie bracket, not the modified Lie bracket or complicated Lie algebra. It is really an algebra. And assuming that the soft and hard part uh, factorize, you, you can also indeed use that the soft and hard part of the flux close the, BM, uh, close the BMS algebra. So explicitly, you can compute what are these break, bracket relationships between the fluxes, and you obtain the, the following expression, um, together, of course, with the complex conjugate, which I'm not writing down. So these are the, the algebra of, of BMS flux. And using these brackets, you can deduce a singular part of the operator expansion, and you obtain the following OPE uh, on, the, on the celestial sphere. So, and I will show in a second that these, the OPE between these very basic things, which are BMS flux, give you uh, the operator product expansion on the, of the celestial conformal P theory. So again, re, re, before doing that, let me recall what I told you in the beginning. We had this super translation current, which really was one of the um, really the one of the major and first observation that led to all the celestial holography program was probably the statement that um, insertion of the support translation current was giving you the white bear sub uh, leading sub graviton theorem, and we had a stress tensor, which is a a two comma zero. So I, I don't think it was really understood how these things were arising from really the gravitational solution space. Most of the, the work here were uh, focusing on scattering, scattering amplitude recast in mailing transform bases and taking a certain conformally soft limit, taking shadow of it and, and collinear, collinear limits, which gives you the OP. So we wanted to understand what were these things from a gravitational more gravitational perspective. 
And the relation between these uh, CCFT operators and the fluxes that I have presented before is, is given by, by this expression. So this is the super translation operator um, of Andy Strominger, but again, decorated with, the, with these, all these subtleties that you have to include um, if you want a very a nice transformation rule. Um, it's a it's a three half one half. It can be seen as if you want descending from um, from a three half minus a half from these leadings of graviton operator. <clears throat> and of course, there is a anti I mean a complex conjugate of this this object. And the relationship between the momenta is given as 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 very this very simple expression. Now, what about the stress tensor? So we have a two comma zero, and we wanted to relate it to our flux, which is this curly J, which if you recall was a one comma two and a two comma one. And this is how they, they should be related. And indeed you can see that the soft part of the super rotation charge um, can be written. This is the, the usual, you know, uh, Virazoro charge in the CFT. And you can rewrite it uh, in terms of this uh, soft flux. Um, and this is how the, the stress tensor transform under the action of extended BMS symmetry. So it's it's a two comma zero under a vera zero as expected, but it has also this um, um, very peculiar transformation rule under super translation. So yeah, you can rewrite these brackets um, and between these objects. And what you find is the following expression. So these are the brackets between the celestial uh, currents, uh, the super translation current and the stress tensor. And so finally, from this bracket, you can obtain um, the op operator product expansion. Of, of these of these things. So as you can see, this is just stating that a super translation, if you want to commute with each other, uh, this is the statement that um, this curly P here transform as a primary of weight, weight uh, three half, uh, three, three half, uh, sorry, three half, one half. Um, you have um, very importantly, let me, let me maybe emphasize on, on this relation. So this is the usual uh, OP of, of a stress tensor in a CFT. And you can see here that basically the central charge is, is vanishing. So this is, um, this was, I guess, always a question in, in Celestia CFT, what was the, the value of the, of the central charge? Um, whether it was zero, infinity, or just 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 a number. So here, I think at least at the, you know, from this classical pers perspective, which is really the analog, if you want, of the Brown and no central charge in ADS CFT, uh, the central charge uh, is zero, and this is consistent with with this work by Fotopudov, um, Stieberger, and Taylor, which have obtained. Um, this OP between the stress tensor of the CFT from a very different perspective, namely they take Einstein Young Mills amplitudes, um, then they take consecutive uh, conformally soft, uh, while well, you need first to, to take a shadow transform, then you take a soft limit and a collinear limit to get the OPE and they found this relationship. Now a difference between um, our work and other in, um, in celestial CFT literature is that we have really, our objects are really Vera Zoro primaries. And um, importantly, they are, they are not only descendants, but they are really primary, primary descendants. So in other words, uh, you don't have any, uh, let's say you don't have any one over z to the to the power of four here. So this, these are really a primaries versus uh, other other works which have emphasized 
uh, that uh, these objects were descended. So I think I'm, I'm reaching the end of my, of my talk. Um, let, this is probably the last slide. So you can, um, you can compute what is the, um, now you can deduce if you want, what is a, a general operator product expansion of this object with a, an arbitrary operator on the celestial sphere. And so this is, uh, this is the OPE for our flux. And from there, by using the relationship I showed before, you recover these, um, these, um, this relation, which again is nothing but the leading subgraviton theorem written in a celestial, um, celestial language. And let me again stress that these, the super translation current shifts the weights of the primary on the celestial sphere by one half, one half. Um, and, and similarly, the OP involving this now super angular uh, fluxes, uh, from there, by taking some uh, contour integrals, you obtain uh, the OP involving the stress tensor in the, in the CCFT which is just a statement that um, the, the operator representing a gauge boson on the steel sphere are transforming under full Virazora primaries. All right, so uh, this is my conclusion. So um, I, I wanted, we wanted to emphasize that probably a very natural object to look at in, um, in, in gravity that are very nicely um, related to the object in celestial holography are these BMS fluxes, which are these non-local combinations. So it's these U integrated uh, objects obtained from the gravity solution space. Importantly, these BMS fluxes satisfy a bunch of nice properties. They, they involve a prescription, which make them uh, U finite and they vanish for non-radiative solutions. So watch out that if you want to include the, the, the extended uh, symmetry, so these super rotations, you need to be very careful about all these vacuum structures. So you need to take into account all these subtleties involving this Liouville field and the vacuum stress tensor. So these BMS fluxes very uh, nicely transform in the quadrant representation of BMS4. Um, their algebra uh, closes with the usual Lie bracket without any central uh, term or field dependent co-cycle, which is important in the probably in future step of quantization of this algebra. Um, and their algebra gives you right away the operator product expansion in the celestial CFT. Uh, namely, I, I showed how the super translation uh, currents and the stress tensor uh, were, uh, could be obtained from these, uh, from these BMS fluxes. So I'm done, uh, thank you very much. And if you have any question, just let me know. Yes, thank you so much for this very nice talk. And now we have quite a bit of time for questions. So uh, please raise your hands. <laughs> okay, while people are thinking, I have one very naive question out of ignorance, curiosity. This presence of the Louisville field, it seemed like, was that expected because this is a, 2D CFD and Liouville gravity is to do with 2D gravity. Like, could there be something else or was it like, uh, natural that it appears, the Liouville field appears? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not, I didn't, it's not meant to say that, you know, the Liouville theory, that there is the, the, the theory is the Liouville theory whatsoever. It's just, it just happened that the, the object that you need to, 
to introduce to have these um, these um, these vacuum stress tensor, which has which you know which you want to call maybe the physical stress um, news in the sense that it stays zero if you act with a super translation a super rotation it stays zero uh, involve an object that um, a scalar which satisfy Liouville equation now. There might be some very um, a deeper reason why this is the case, and there were there was some some work by by um, Kevin and Guyen and Jacob Salser where they actually built some geometric action the action for based using this this Liouville field. So you know, and okay, you have also Schwarzian and so on and so forth. So they might be. I think it's, it's it's worth keeping exploring this this thing. I think it's still new and um, we haven't fully made um, full advantage of this um, of this new construction. Okay, thank thank you for that. So, any other questions? Okay, I, I don't see any raised hands. So let's thank our speaker again. Thank you very much. Yeah.